Part two of the non-emergency services program is being presented to the Sun City neighborhood representatives. A plethora of resources and strategies is being shared to help us in anticipation of future needs our residents may have. Sun City TV is privileged to bring this information to you, our Sun City residents. The next item on the agenda goes to the theme that we've been using for the past two meetings, and that is talking about how to uh, stay safe. We are going to hear from Staying Connected, and then uh, Barbara LeMay will do a discussion of all the resources available to us, and Lee will go up through emergency contacts and things like making sure you all know so your emergency contact knows your passwords. At this point, this, there will be questions at the end of the, the uh, different presentations, and Sun City is also recording this so that you do not have to worry about trying to get every last piece of information down. It will be recorded and available to all of our residents, and of course, there will also be the minutes. So with that, I would uh, like to introduce Barbara LeMay, who will talk to you, uh, who will introduce our next speaker, Mary O'Brien. Good morning, everyone. Um, Barbara LeMay, I'm from the Bull Hill neighborhood. Um, I moved down here in 2009, 16 years ago, when I was very young. Um, I, had a, I had a career in New Jersey as a child abuse social worker for 33 years. Um, the major focus of my, my career was to assist adolescents who were aging out of the system, giving them the tools necessary to prepare for their lives, to find an appropriate place for them to live, and to have a life where they could take control. Uh, fast forward to 2014, I was fortunate enough to be able to join um, this wonderful program here on campus called Staying Connected. Um, there is a hub main office, which is right next door in the Embassy Craft area. I suggest that we all make an effort to go visit them from time to time. It contains a wealth of information on what we can do to help ourselves plan. Um, during my five years with Staying Connected, I eventually was honored by being the member coordinator, which meant I was the go-to person when one of us wasn't doing too well. Um, trying to find resources, trying to develop a plan. And it struck me, it was really no different from being with my adolescents in New Jersey. Some, people, some of us just don't have a plan. Um, so Lee Royan and I were asked to put together this presentation and obviously the first thing I thought about was staying connected. Um, it's an amazing program. Uh, there's so much information, and we all need to be cognizant of the fact that we really do need to make a plan for our future. Um, so with that, I'm going to introduce Mary O'Brien. She's the Vice President of Staying Connected, and I hope that you take away from this presentation some really good information to, to use yourself or to obviously share with your neighborhood. So, Mary. Thank you. Good morning, good morning. Um, I have to tell you a story. This presentation was actually uh, developed and presented by Hugh Armstrong. He is the president of Staying Connected. And he was supposed to be here to do this presentation. But he is in a hospital having a heart procedure done. So I looked at the presentation and it was so good that I felt you had to have it. So I want you to look at me as a 70-ish, tall, balding man with bushy eyebrows. <laughs> and I promise to do my very best to present this to you from Hugh. We all came to Sun City. We came to Sun City and retirement because we were looking for the next chapter of our life. And we wanted it to be fun. We wanted it to be uh, new adventures, new social socializations, and lots of good times. We wanted to follow the yellow brick road for our golden years. 
Now the topic is aging in place. The first thing we have to remember is we want to live in our homes safely. We want dignity. We don't want to be people that people say, oh, that poor old person. And we want control. We want to say what we do when we do it. We don't want to be him, her, or them. Him is a gentleman who lived in historic village and he occasionally walked up and down the streets in his underwear. And this happened several times. And finally they called the sheriff's office and the sheriff came in and did an assessment and called in adult protective services. That man lost control. And he is now in a facility not of his choosing but of their choosing. Her, we don't want to be her either. This is a wonderful woman whose husband had a stroke five years ago and is in a very diminished capacity. And she has been caregiver, running the house, doing everything, and she's worn out. So a year ago, she decided she would look into assisted living facilities where she came from, her home and where she had family. So she found one that she liked. There's a four-year waiting list. You don't want to be her. Them. This is a couple who, um, he was a NASA scientist. She was a professor in a college. She came down with MS. He was her caregiver. And then eventually, he had dementia. They had two sons in California, and the sons would call periodically to check on them, and they were told everything was fine. We're great. In the meantime, bed bugs overtook their entire house. They had open sores. When this was discovered, they called the family, and of course, I told you what the boys said, so they had to fly in and take control. Everything in the house had to be thrown away. Clothes, bedding, furniture, even the car was infected. Now these people had a good sum of money, a lot of money, but it wasn't used to help them because they totally lost control. So you don't want to be them either. And these are true stories. Oops. Facts and considerations. I guess we all know that people are living a lot longer these days. And families are split all across the country. Women generally outlive men. And 20% of baby boomers have absolutely no family. And the way we know that is with staying connected, we ask the question, what is your emergency family contact? And those people, that 20%, tell us it's my attorney. Here's his name, here's his phone number. 30% of the people who have family, they're estranged. They don't talk to them anymore, they don't have any contact, so that's that problem. Alternate living solutions have long waiting lists like the lady I talked to you about. And residents cannot be referred for help, they need to ask, and that's a tough one. Our experience is over 70% of our current memberships are single person households. Over 500 memberships were inactivated since January of 2019. 50% from moving away from Sun City, and I would include in that number people that have passed away. And 38% are uh, people that no longer need us, which is good news, because that means 
that whatever crisis they had, whether it was knee replacement and they lived alone and they needed PT transportation, whatever that crisis in their life was, that it no longer exists. So they don't need us anymore. And we're happy about that. In a perfect world, this is a graph that Hugh did. He likes graphs. <laughs> anyway, the, the point is, when you retire, your health is high and your need for services is low. But as we age, those two numbers, those two lines intersect. And the hopeful thing is that takes like 35 years from the time you retire. However, if you have a sudden event, like a stroke, like Alzheimer's, like some of the other things that can happen to us, those lines will intersect a lot earlier. Now, contributions to your quality of life. You have the physical, which is the general health, ambulatory, and you can drive. So that's like probably all of us, which is great news. Financial is your ability to pay. And that is personal wealth, monthly income, insurance, etc. And that's important. And then we have family social contact. And that's really important, too. You have emotional support, socialization, communication. All these are great things. The last one is cognitive mental acuity. And that means that you can manage your household, you can make decisions, you can drive, and you can manage your finances. If that one goes away, then none of the others are in place. Because you can't make decisions, you can't drive, you can't manage your finances, so you can't pay your bills. So we have to pay attention to that, because it does make a big difference. There are some bumps in the yellow brick road. Physical. You could have a short-term, a long-term health issue. Situational would be loss of a spouse or a um, role change. So one person becomes the caregiver to the other. Financial. Your money could decline over time. Some of us haven't planned to have finances until we're in our 90s. And if we're lucky, that's how long we'll live. So that's an issue. Loss of retirement benefits. If one spouse who has a pension passes away and doesn't have a benefit for the remaining spouse, all of a sudden your finances are in really bad shape. Sudden financial loss. Cognitive, this is the big one, can decline over time Onset of dementia or Alzheimer's, self or partner, makes a huge impact on a household. So, how do we successfully age in place? We have strategies. We have no plan. Wing it. Deal with it as it comes. I have to tell you, my husband and I have this conversation. You know, somebody in our neighborhood will pass away, or somebody else will um, have, be in a hospital for a long-term illness, and we'll say, we need a plan B. And then he goes off to play golf, and I go get my nails done. <laughs> so, we need a plan B. We all need a plan B. We have a passive plan. And that is that we have a framework with options. And you educate yourself on services and support. You identify trigger points. That's a big one. You have to write yourself a note or a letter and say, if this happens, this is what we do then. Because more than likely, if you don't and you get there, you'll forget that that's what you were supposed to do. Identify trigger points, contingencies, what if. Identify likely options and actions. 
have a detailed plan. There's a stat strategy for you. Link specific actions to suppliers and solutions to life events. How many here have a plan? A, a what next plan? Thank you. Thank you. But that wasn't even 30%. 1%. <laughs> It wasn't a lot. What support and services are available? Now, this is something that maybe a lot of you don't know that you all should know, and that is Low Country Council of Governments Area Agency on Aging, and I put up a phone number there for you, okay? These services are free. They have an all-needs-based on assisted assessment and prioritize. So they are prioritized and they say that they're not based on your ability to pay. But I have to think if, if it's prioritized, then that might figure into it at some point. You have to be 60 plus years old in Buford and Jasper County. And the services are, I think, wonderful. They have caregiver relief visits for care, care of diagnosed dementia. What they do is they actually will grant you a $500 credit. You have to spend $500 for uh, caregiver relief within three months, and they will reimburse you the $500. That's that plan. They also have 24 hours per month for home assistance. And that would be in the case of someone that does live alone, and we had this woman who had uh, shoulder surgery, and you know how bad that is. And so she really needed some help in the home, and that would qualify her for that 24 hours. 12 hours per month of housekeeping if there's no able-bodied person in the house to do it. Home-delivered meal plans, minor home repairs, and insurance counseling and referral program. All of these services can be reached by that phone number. If, and if that number doesn't apply to the particular thing you're looking for, they will transfer you to, to the appropriate person. Aging in place menu of tools. I'll let you look at this. Um, most of the items on here cost. So, you know, if one of your plan might be, I'm gonna stay in my house and I'm gonna hire home health aides. Currently, they go for about $60 an hour. And they have minimums. Maybe 12 hours, maybe 20 hours a week. And depending upon what you need, 20 hours a week may not be enough. So these are things that you have to think about when you start putting together your next step plan. How can staying connected help? And what I'm telling you is what, is what Barbara told you too. The resource hub is available to all residents. You do not have to be a member. We have information there about agencies, service providers, and support common who support common challenges. Resources, tools that can help you be prepared and build a plan. I brought with me today some things that we have in the resource hub that anybody can pick up. And there's a folder here of information for caregivers a caregiver's guide. So if you have people in your neighborhood who are caregivers, they could get this and get some help, get some information. We also have one that's planning for the unexpected, the green one. And then we have a survivor's guide with all kinds of information for people who are left without a spouse. It's there. How can a neighborhood rep help their neighbors? That's what all of you are here for. 
I want you to observe and listen. If you have a neighbor who doesn't always put out their trash receptacle every week, if you have a neighbor that you notice has a lot of things in their lower box and maybe their, their mailbox is stuffed, um, if you don't see somebody out and you notice that they used to walk around the block a couple of times and all of a sudden they're not there at all, you might think about picking up the phone and giving them the call and just say, hey, how's it going? How are you? And kind of get your antenna up. Communicate. Ensure that your neighborhood is encouraged to look for signs that concern them. You'd be surprised. Neighbors know other neighbors' habits. They do. And when they see those habits not happen, they, they get anxious. And a lot of times what they'll do is they'll call uh, Securitas and ask them to do a wellness check. The problem with the wellness check, I'll tell you, is this. Um, they will send two officers and um, they'll ring the doorbell and if there's no answer, they'll walk around the house and look in the windows. But if you're living alone, are your blinds open? Probably not. And then they try to call the house and if there's no answer, they walk away because there's nothing more that they can do. So, we're dependent upon neighbors to try to push it a little further. Encourage people, people are proud, very proud. And that's one of our problems actually as a society that we're so proud we don't wanna ask for help. Encourage them to reach out and ask for help. And the last one is, if you are concerned that a neighbor is in danger, call the appropriate sheriff's office. They will come out and they will gain access and they will make an assessment. If they see that someone is in danger, they will get in touch with Adult Protective Services and guess what? That person's name comes to the top. Some final thoughts for you. Face the truth. We are aging in place right now. Acting early is better than being late. Don't wait to be prepared. Tomorrow may be too late. Help your family. They don't, you don't want to be a burden. Now, I'll tell you, I told my daughter that I would live in an empty refrigerator box before I would live with her or our son. <laughs> Picture that. And my husband gets mad because he says, Mary, that's not, you know, you, you, you won't have to do that. I said, but I'm trying to paint a picture. I do not want to live with my children. Not that they're nice, not nice people, they are. But because they are nice people, I don't want to do that to them. Include your aging in place plan in your estate documents. Ensure someone is aware. Make sure your family knows what your intentions are. So that if you get to the point where somebody else is making decisions for you, they know what your choice is. And that's it for me. Thank you very much for your attention. Just wanted to add, um, Lee and I, she's been wonderful. I don't, do, I don't do this PowerPoint stuff. I don't even know how to do it. Um, the, the hub has these two sheets. I call them their cheat sheets. Um, it lists services, it lists resources, it lists anything you might think of that you might, might need help with. Um, it also gives some information about when it's no longer appropriate to be here. Um, there was, I was able to get a copy Oh, I have to move this, right? Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so this is the at a glance, by what I call the cheat sheets um, for staying connected. They'll be on the website. 
uh, our community website so that you can look at it, but I suggest that you go and get a copy for yourself from the hub. Um, this is only, there's two, two sheets, this is only one of them, to give you an idea. Dementia care, care managed, caregiving assistance, adult day programs, um, and assistance to help you decide to make a plan if you can't stay here anymore. Um, the Low Cog, Low Country Council of Government, it is a, a wonderful resource. Um, we use that in staying connected a lot for respite care services. Um, Non-medical, you know, home care, you know, home health aides, hospice care, there's a lot of resources listed. Hospitals, we most of us know, and medical equipment. Thank God we have our woman here in, in Sun City that has a lot of medical equipment for us to use. Um, but then I go on to realizing that we can't stay here all the time. Some of us really do need to move on. I was able to get a copy from Memory Matters. Um, it's a pretty comprehensive uh, guide asking questions. This is Senior Living Communities Explained. It explains in depth what an independent living community is, what an assisted living community provides, a memory care unit, or skilled nursing care. Um, it's just to help you decide which category you may fit into. Um, Talking about finding something for a loved one that has memory care that can no longer live at home. These are questions to ask of the facility to make sure that you're feeling comfortable about where they are. Uh, the senior living communities. I was amazed when I saw this. I didn't realize we had so many in, in our area, in the low country. These are all um, places where we can live if we can't stay here. Um, phone numbers. Um, they give an idea of how much it would cost per month to stay in one of these places. Um, it's funny, I, I have a, I, having lived here a long time like many of us have, so many of my friends have moved on to bigger and better things. Um, there's half of the people I know are up in, uh, in Wesley Commons in, in South, northern South Carolina. It's like a little mini Sun City. Um, except that it's a continuing care program. It's just one of the availability uh, places that we can all consider um, if we need to not live here anymore. I'd like to introduce my buddy, Lee Royan, um, who has developed a PowerPoint. And I, again, I think this is one of the most important pieces um, of us living here. Let's go down memory lane a little, okay? Take yourself back to 1990, 1995, before we had these things. Excuse me. It's okay. Think about it. I'm an old ER trauma nurse. Back in the 1990s, men used to go jogging. In, I lived outside Washington, D.C. And they'd wear their shorts and their T-shirts, and they'd have the big one when they were out running. EMS brought him to the ER, we're pumping and blowing, we're doing everything, and the man passes away. Did he have a wallet with his ID in him? We had to get the police, we had to fingerprint him. Luckily, we were near Washington, down to the FBI, and two hours later, we'd get a call. Hello, ma'am? Yes, uh, this is the identification you are asking for on the fingerprints? Wow, that was fast. Ma'am, this is the FBI. <laughs> I mean, we didn't argue with them. So that's why I am really, really stressing emergency contacts. First of all, we all have one of those little things. I should have brought mine up. This here is my iPhone. And you can see here, over here in the black, you see where it says emergency? If you tap that, it'll take you here. Well, you don't have the password. You're a first responder. You're an ER person. You hit medical ID. It'll take you to, on the, it'll be on your right, where it says emergency SOS. And you can see I have my daughter listed as an emergency contact. When you want to set this up, you clearly go to your settings, and you're going to go down into emergency SOS. Then, I don't have an Android, so I went to the T-Mobile store, and a nice young man was very nice. You're going to do the same thing in an Android phone. You're going to go to settings. 
you're going to hit safety and emergency. And you can do medical information, and you can do the same on an iPhone. I mean, if you're a diabetic, if you have a heart disease, you can list your medications. I list whether I'm a, uh, am I a DNR. Yes, I'm an organ donor. You can give as much information as you think an emergency room or a paramedic may need. Okay? So, again, as I said, organ donor, give some history. You, you can go as far as your allergies, your height and your weight, what drugs you may be on. Again, emergency context. And please, do not list your spouse. If you and your spouse are in a car accident and you both die, gee, we're stuck. So if you don't have family or if you have a, someone in your neighborhood that doesn't have family, list their attorney, list their financial planner, or maybe it's just a very trusted neighbor. We would hope everybody has a will, and so list that attorney's office. You know, there are ways of doing this. The other thing, and I know a lot of neighborhoods here in Sun City have done this, it's the file of life. And at least here in Beaufort County, that's currently what our EMS fire and police use. The file of life, um, it comes with this form that you can fill all this information, and again, your emergency contacts, list your medication, and they ask that go like on the side of your refrigerator. I don't want it on the front of my refrigerator for all my guests to see, but put it on the side of your refrigerator because when they come in your house, they know to go look there. So for Sun City, this is the form to provide emergency contacts, and you can get it at Palmetto Commons. You can download it and take it, fill it out and take it to Palmetto Commons. They will enter it into the computer system and then it is there and they file it. Barbara's presentation with all that information of all those different types of facilities and what they cost and all the other local resources as well as this PowerPoint are this afternoon, I will place both of them on the website. So. Go down to board appointed committees, resident advisory, then you're going to go to 2024 NRC meetings and presentations. And that's where you're going to have the in case of emergency form. You're also going to find, as I said, the two PowerPoints. Computer passwords, we all have them. I mean, there are very few people here in Sun City that don't use a computer. But does your family, your whoever's going to be your trustee, know where the passwords are? Keep them in a notebook. Um, my daughter gave me a notebook she found on Amazon. It has a kind of a funny thing on the front, which I won't repeat. But I have all my passwords in there. And she knows where it is. I keep it locked, and she knows where the key is. Um, do on an Excel spreadsheet and maybe email it to your children or give it to them when they come see you. But somebody has to know, I mean, to get into your bank account. I mean, think of all the things we do on our computer that requires a password. 